is Tom, I am the Crypto Investor, and it's time for our weekly market roundup. As ever, we start with a heat map of the top 100 tokens in crypto. You can see that we're red once more. Uh, Ethereum down 1.5%, Bitcoin down 7.5%. This is the last seven days, by the way, and I sent this video previously to you six days ago, so we're slightly skewed uh, here. But uh, in general, we're pretty red across the board. Looking at the L1 space, um, Avalanche and Solana are both down 17%. Um, the only real tokens that are forming rather well are Luna and Matic, both friends of the channel, strong tokens that I have in my portfolio. Uh, Near Protocol, um, this is up to 31st by market cap. I don't know a great deal about this L1. It's up 13% this week, but maybe I should do. Please tell me more, Crypto Cats, if this is something I need to be holding in my bag. Um, by the way, if you do like the channel, if you like the content, please smash the like button. It really helps with the... YouTube algorithm overlords. Uh, looking at the bubbles, um, we have CVX, the uh, uh, Curve Finances, that Convex Finance, they, uh, that's up 22% for the week. I think that's just jumped into the top 100 there. Um, impressive, impressive protocol has been doing very well. Um, we have Near, we have BitTorrent, uh, Cadena hit hard down 20%, Loopring looking pretty solid too. And just looking at the burn, we've had, you may have noticed gas prices weren't so bad this week. Um, the Ethereum blockchain has been slightly less busy. Uh, maybe NFTs aren't quite as um, manic. Um, but general, we're, we're, the, the activity on the ETH blockchain is a little quieter than the previous few weeks or so. And looking at what have we got next, looking at the ratio between Bitcoin and Ethereum, the uh, Ethereum is holding above that 50% of the market cap of Bitcoin, so the half flipping, it's still at 52%. So that's strong to see um, because my bags are firmly packed with ETH. Looking at the uh, locked in DeFi, uh, you have Curve um, out in number one, quality, quality token. And it's not surprising it's doing so well when you also consider how many chains it operates on compared to many of its other top peers. The only one that is there is sushi swap um, which is obviously on many 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 chains but sushi swap in turmoil this week after i think it was jason delong their cto left uh, the project um the ox maki obviously left uh, a few months ago so internally they are in pieces right now it's a shaky time and not surprisingly the token is suffering i think it's dropped out of the top 100. Um, you know they still get a lot of volume on their exchange Maybe it's a good time to lean in. I would wait for the dust to settle. It's, you know, it's, it's shaky internally. We'll see um, if that phoenix comes out of the ashes there. But Sushi having a terrible, terrible week. Um, right. And then on the L2 side of things, we are down 10% on the week. Mostly, of course, because the broader market is down 10%. Um, so, um, yeah, we are seeing... Uh, oh, a big big move was Aztec, which is up 35% in their uh, total value locked. Um, you know, it's pretty small, 9 million compared to all these. And so 35% isn't difficult on 9 million compared to 2.2 billion. But uh, one to keep an eye on, um, a decent privacy L2 roll up from my understanding. I don't think they got a token. All right. So the big news coming out yesterday was inflation in the US came in at 6.8% for the month. Um, it was 5.2% the previous month. And the market actually celebrated this because, you know, obviously the analysts say this month, we think we will have inflation of 6.8%. And it came in exactly as predicted, even though it seems to contradict me there, it did. Um, so this is the cost of food and energy and such. And this was actually good for crypto. And we saw um, Bitcoin and all the major cryptos rally on the back of this print, because without going into too much detail, the if we if we were to get really high inflation, you'd think that would be good for crypto because it would obviously be that safety haven, that life raft away from a failing hyperinflation financial um, system. But actually, um, if we got high inf higher inflation print, it would mean that the Fed would have to really stop the um, printing press and have to raise interest rates now to you know to pour cold water on a overheating. Uh, economy effectively and um, you know in high inflation would be way more detrimental than them raising interest rates of course if they raise interest rates that means that people can get return on their money in the bank 
1.5%, 1, 1 rather than having to speculate on growth stocks and cryptocurrencies. And so that's why uh, the fact that maybe, maybe it's sort of un under control. Um, we'll see again next month if it comes in higher or if we're kind of plateauing. Um, but we don't want runaway inflation because it means investors are less likely to speculate on those. You know, you've got growth stocks and then you've got crypto as an asset class. And so um, this was interesting to see anyway. And the market reacted as expected, although we then got up to 50,000 and turned around. And we've since seen uh, give back those gains in the last 24 hours anyway. Um, Terra, their TVL. Um, has overtaken Solana and Avalanche this week. And, you know, we, I've been banging on about Terra Luna, absolute quality L1 solution with the same tokenomics as uh, Ethereum. It is deflationary and it's being adopted and we're seeing more and more total value locked on this solution. And so really good to see this happening. And for me, it represents an undervalued token. Um, you know, if you can... Uh, <laughs> consider Solana how much uh, I think it's probably got double the market cap of Luna and uh, and less transactions and Solana of course this week had a second fuck up their validators went down their blockchain basically came to a halt for the second time the price did not really waver that much but I personally sold half of my Solana on the back of this um, and bought more curve um, and more Matic and more Luna. Um, so yeah, it's surprising. I suppose it shows how much is locked, um, how much is staked as well, or maybe that many of the bag holders Solana aren't paying too much attention to this, but you've got to have a reliable network. You can't have a blockchain that goes down or even a hint, a sniff that it might go down. Dodgy. Um, Polygon, I was expecting more from them this week uh, with their, um, their conference, uh, ZK Day. But uh, their big announcement was that they were buying another scaling start startup called MIR for $400 million paid in Polygon's tokens. Uh, and this is a zero knowledge proof. So it's another way of them effectively scaling Ethereum with their, with their side chain. So um, you know, this is another the second acquisition they've made in this space. They are becoming the place to scale. And they're se we're seeing broad adoption of Polygon by many institutions and exchanges like Coinbase have adopted Polygon as well. So really looking fantastic as a project. Um, price action was, I mean, it's still up for the week in a, in a red market, but not quite the fanfare I was, I was, I was hoping for on the back of their uh, ZK day. But still good to see the ambitions of the projects are impressive. Um, this is interesting. Free Iris Capital, you may have remembered the tweet that Su Zhu um, said that he was abandoning Ethereum. Well, he's just a trader and he was just ship posting you so you would sell your Ethereum to him. They just bought $400 million worth and no doubt closed out on their Avalanche and Solana longs and gone back into ETH. So they were shorting, now they're long again. Um, just shows that, you know, don't necessarily follow traders for your kind of macro investment strategies because they are absolutely believers of Ethereum, not haters of it. Okay, cool. Um, okay, so Congress met this week with many of the big names in crypto. Overall, the consensus was this was bullish because Congress were basically saying, all right, we kind of hear you. We're, we're, we're willing to understand the argument here. We don't want to pass up on the innovation opportunity and see this go to another country. We want this to remain in America. And so it feels like an inflection point that they're looking at legislation, you know, probably by the year 2025 or something, we'll have a digital assets um, bill, which will cover all this rather than trying to roll them into treating them like securities and old legacy kind of finance, because it's a completely different thing. Um, but it's amazing to see if you haven't watched this, if you don't subscribe to croissant.eef, do fantastic uh, Twitter handle. And he's got some of the highlights here, or she has, and um, they're very good. It's, wor it's worth uh, watching. There's some interesting and funny ones in there as well. 
Um, but I do think we will see some potential uh, regulation coming onto stablecoins soon. Not that that should necessarily hurt the market, but you know, the stablecoins have to substantiate and legally that they do have the assets to back up the um, you know the amount of uh, money that they are then putting into the crypto market. So Japan is putting this week they've put some restrictions on on stable coins and other countries will be following suit fine um the matrix had its nft project hundred thousand nfts i think they were saying like 150 bucks each sold out uh hundred thousand adidas has bought itself a uh, board eight uh nft um pepsi are doing some nft stuff as well and some really cringy conversations with them and Meta and stuff. Uh, this is going to look great in the Metaverse. You know it, friend. Ugh. Uh, sh anyway, it's, uh, it's a little cringy, a little top signally, but it's all adoption. And, uh, you know, they recognize, as I say time and time again, that crypto has a built-in incentive mechanism to propagate it. The more that these companies get involved, the more money they make, and they can start putting it on their bottom line. Digital asset growth up. 20,000% this month and the investors like that uh, this is I don't know why this isn't bigger news this week WhatsApp have launched a cryptocurrency payment pilot in the US WhatsApp has a reach of 2 billion people it's huge and they're using Pax dollar which I believe is on Ethereum as a stable coin so yeah massive if that trial goes well oh and I've just remembered I left something out here uh, was it Ubisoft let's jump to it um, so Ubisoft, the big gaming company, announced that they are moving into NFTs, and then as do, in doing, which was initially bullish, and in doing so, they put a video out onto YouTube, um, and it got a 95% down vote. And you know, this is the second time we saw this with Discord that the gaming community has backlashed considerably at the prospect of NFTs being implemented into gaming. So. This is probably pour cold water on Ubisoft's plans to move into the NFT space. It feels like the community is not really ready for it yet. Gamers are obviously worried that this will change gaming forever. Once you really, you know, once you add money into the system, or the chance that you know someone can just come in with X amount of money to get to this level in a game rather than working your way up. I don't know. I, I'm not a gamer, but it's uh, it's interesting to see that there's again such big pushback from the gaming community i would see it obviously from their perspective if if you're good at gaming this can now be your career you can be um, buying you can be achieving certain assets gun shields whatever selling them in a marketplace because you're really good at that game probably make a hundred grand a year playing your favorite computer games but you know people resist change uh, where was I? Okay, where did we get to? Done all these, haven't we? Hang in there, crypto cats. Okay, this is just quite interesting as a uh, comparison. So you can't see this here, but this is a Bitcoin transaction. Uh, Bitcoin transaction is, I think it's double the amount of energy required for a US home. Uh, yeah, double the amount of energy required for a US home to be powered for one month. Um, and Ethereum's a uh, fifth of that. Uh, and you know, 10 gallons of gasoline is the same for one Ethereum transaction. Right now, of course, that will be changing once it moves to proof of stake in April or so. And then you've got a smartphone charge, and then you've got a, a Polygon Matic transaction. If you didn't watch my video um, on Matic this week, uh, please do so. And I was talking about this as well, but just thought this was kind of interesting. All right, this is interesting. Why are crypto influencers shilling ADA? Um, you know, Cardano is all over YouTube, and and this is this is the hundred million dollar secret of why Cardano YouTubers that they don't want you to know. Basically, you can create no, you can stake your Cardano and you can earn five percent yield on it. But if I create a staking pool, basically, if I encourage people to stake with me and I make my own staking pool, I get a uh, hundred um, percent return. I get I think I get a five percent. I get a hundred percent of their five percent as well. I can't remember the numbers, but I think I get the same again that they're staking. And so this basically shows um, like some of the big names in crypto. Surprisingly, Ben Cohen from Into the Crypto, he's a wonderful, wonderful uh, technical analyst. And, you know, fair enough, make money in this space. But um, I guess a bit of transparency would be good. He's making $460,000 a year through his um, 
uh, Ada staking pool and all you know bit boy yada 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 so you know don't think that they're necessarily should because I always thought it was strange that Ben was so bullish on Ada it didn't really fit for me on his thesis and now I know now I kind of really feel comfortable in my denouncement of, of Cardano which doesn't have a product doesn't have smart contracts does nothing um, and it feels like you know this it really is kind of a pyramid scheme which has been built out there to proliferate it on YouTube these are big numbers and of course he would do that and if you go into his website um, and I'm not having a go at him he's a great he seems like a great great guy and sure make half a million a year um, but you know you can go staking and you can see on here Cardano, I don't know if Avalanche does the same as well. It'd be interesting to know. I assume it does, or why would he have this? But you can click on his Cardano pool, um, and you can choose one of his three different Cardano pools, and he walks you through this. Um, and so, yeah, this you know this makes him half a million a year. Important to know this. It means that the um, I've forgotten the word. You're not impartial as uh, you know when you're when you're putting out this content. All right, uh, Ramp, who provide on-ramps to invest in crypto, they are adopting L2, so you can start to have your um, people that come in new to crypto don't have to deal with the horrific gas fees on L1. Um, as Bankless Guy said, you know, uh, starting in crypto on L1 is like being dumped into Manhattan with two bucks from, from your taxi, and you're just like, what do I do here? But if you're on L2s, um, you, can, you can do stuff, and uh, it's good to see, you know, this is how it'll have to be. L1 will not be a place for humans. L1 will be a place for other blockchains to talk to. Um, as Again, as Bankless says, the, the lava is rising and our assets on L1, you know, I'm the same, I've got plenty of stuff on my MetaMask, it could become prohibitively expensive to move it. So we have to work on where we can moving those assets onto L2s over the coming months or so because transacting on L1 Ethereum is just going to keep on going up and up and up and up over time as that block space gets into more demand. Badger DAO was hacked. 120 million has been stolen from Badger DAO. It wasn't even a smart contract problem. It was something to do with their user interface. Um, and so Nexus Mutual aren't paying out on that as well. Um, uh, if you're not familiar with Pocket Network, uh, this is the number of transactions on Pocket Network right now. And it just continues to be up and to the right. It's exponentially growing. Um, Pocket Network is not currently on any um, exchange or even on um, has, doesn't have liquidity pools on um, on Uniswap and SushiSwap and such. But uh, this is my sixth biggest holding, and I might buy some more. Um, they're basically a cross-chain solution to web-free scaling. From what I understand, you can use this on anything. Um, they, you know, they work with every L1 basically. Um, and this could be one of the most important pieces of infrastructure for, for the web-free world. You have to buy it over the counter, so OTC, from other people. Um, so I encourage you to yeah, go down that rabbit hole to pokt.network and, uh, and learn about that. Because for me, this is, um, this is still a bit of an unsung gem of a token. And it continues to go from strength to strength. I met the founder in Lisbon uh, a month or so back, and he's a lovely bloke. All right, Naval, the credible philosopher, is saying that when building portfolio of investments that can have non-linear outcomes, which it means exponential growth, never sell early. You may be right most of the time, but the one time that you're wrong will cost you the most in returns. And he does give some exceptions. You've completely lost faith in the project, so you know don't keep on holding something you don't believe in. Um, you can buy something better. Um, uh, it's too much of your net wealth, you know, if it's 70, 80% of your net wealth, then sure, diversify a bit, um, or you need to spend some money. But, you know, basically, this is it, like, this is why I will always be holding on to a big chunk of my ETH and other L1s that I believe in, um, because I am I know where this space is going, I've done the research, I have conviction in my investment, um, and we don't, our brains can't compute with exponential returns, you know, we we only know these kind of linear returns, um, but exponential, you can really, really sell too early and um, and not pick up on that, you know, significant upside. So obviously, if the money gets silly and it's you know, all you need and such, take it. But just be, don't forget to to be holding long term for your exponential returns because it's for me it seems obvious that they're coming in this space. It's just a question of time, 
and holding quality. Um, and this is kind of indicative of that in a way. This is the NASDAQ um, valued by the S&P. And you can see that we've only just got back to the NASDAQ being worth the same as the dot-com um, bubble. And, and you can see that technology basically has completely outperformed the uh, value legacy companies for the last 20 years. And so it will continue to go. And then you've got crypto, which will outperform tech companies by some way. So that is that. God, this is quite a long one, isn't it? That was that Ubisoft piece. Let's get into the charts. Hang in there, crypto cats. It's important stuff. Uh, okay, so this is looking at Bitcoin on the weekly chart. And you can see that, you know, okay, we've been in this big old channel since um, the end of 2020. Let's just keep it macro because people get scared and people think we're dumping. Um, why would we be dumping? You know, why would why would this be? Why would the party be over? Okay, I do have some concerns about the kind of that macro piece that I'm talking about, about um, the Fed having to ease up on its bond back buying um, and put in interest rates up, and so investors are less inclined to look for speculative investments when they can get interest in the bank. But they're never going to really be able to put interest rates up very high. There's so much debt laden into our system that interest rates can't really go up above two and a half percent because the whole thing would completely implode as all these zombie companies like General Electric and um, you know they they can't function they will go under they'd have to be privatized if they if they had that high uh, interest rates so anyway um, we you know I think we're reaching a point of pretty much maximum pain for people almost and uh, and this is looking good. I like this. I'm I'm freeing up some liquidity, I'm selling off a, a bit of equities, um, adding to my to my stack of ETH um, and Luna and Matic, and I might buy some more pot pocket as well. Um, you know, I think this is our fourth down week, and uh, and probably we'll start. To, we've got a bit of a doji this week, which is an indecisive candle up and down, staying in the middle. I think we're probably going to start to bottom out fairly soon. Um, maybe the rest of December is going to be a bit crabby, a bit sideways, uh, and then we'll start to work our way back up again. So, you know, I don't see, I'm not running for the hills. I'm not concerned by this. Looking on a more short term time frame, you can see that we are holding this downward channel. Um, and for me to really, apart from just kind of dollar cost averaging in, for me to get long on this market would be for us to take out this overhead trend line here uh, currently sitting at 50, 50, well, right here above us, 54,000 or so. So that's that's where the market needs to be to really look like it's um, turned direction. Looking at Ethereum, uh, let's take this onto the weekly chart. You can see, okay, yeah, we're, we're down for those last four or five weeks or so, but really we're just back to where we were uh, in October and these kind of lows at the beginning of November. Again, it's possible that we just have a bit of sideways time. We put, you know, this is, we've had a big move. Maybe we just consolidate a little bit and then we begin our next leg up. But this is not a market that looks like it's crashing to me and I don't really have or share that concern that many people seem to feel. So, uh, you know, this all looks fine. Again, nice channel that we're still maintaining. These are just, you know, these are just multi, multi week moves. Uh, if we look at this on the, I don't know if that's going to do it. Is it going to do it on the monthly chart? Okay, yeah, we're down for the month, but uh, we're still nicely holding this channel. It looks fine to me. Relax, guys. Just close it down and enjoy your Christmas. Looking at the ETH Bitcoin ratio, you know this is nice. The, the, the fact I'm mostly holding ETH, Matic, Luna, which are increasing in their dominance, makes me feel comfortable. Um, and I think you know it's about having those quality tokens and playing the long macro time frame, not trying to get rich too quick with leverage and too much shitcoin. Um, and you can see that you know we had that pivotal breakout. We let's just look at this on the weekly. We were in this pennant formation. After that breakout, we did the pennant. Da, 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 da. We didn't see it out. It's just too bullish. Off it popped, and uh, and we we are sitting up here. We are just down slightly on the week after um, we were, I think, up to 55% of the ratio. And just to show you, this is this is what uh, ETH would need to get to to flip Bitcoin. Um, you know, right now, we're in a fairly 
aggressive trajectory inside this channel. I don't think we hold that. Um, that would flip it in May. That's not going to happen. But, you know, maybe we start getting up towards here by the end of, yeah, I don't know, 2020, depending on the broader market, but end of 2022, 2023 or so. Where would this trend line take us? This trend line would call, say for flipping by June 2023. That sounds that sounds fairer. Okay, so yeah, I've you know I've moved all of my Bitcoin into Ethereum a several um, several months back and uh, and continue to hold that. DeFi continues to look soft. Um, had another week selling off. Um, looking at DeFi versus Ethereum, the most depressing chart in crypto. Why must we look at it? Um, Another uh, just continues to go low. I think we are slightly up on the week. Yeah, look, not much going on. Um, Ryan Sean Adams is calling the bottom here, I, you know, based on, on no tech analysis, but just generally like we are cheap. Um, and if there are DeFi protocols that you believe in that are doing a good job of moving on to L2s, then this is a great time to be dollar cost averaging into those ones that you think have the technology to, um, to be there in, you know, in, in many years to come like curve perhaps um and the metaverse tokens etf effectively mvi is uh, down a bit on the week versus eth but has had a bit of a fight back not looking too bad to be honest uh, versus eth see if that can have another move higher but you know you have to consider that um tokens like sandbox are like 35th by market cap um and decentraland 40th or so that it's quite hot it is quite expensive um, and then you see what's happening with say ubisoft having gamers react negatively towards nfts and it just feels like maybe it's not this cycle but the next cycle um bitcoin shorts i think this is kind of interesting bitcoin shorts down for the second week in a row and you can see that you know the short sellers made their money they've exited their shorts and they continue to generally be going down um, and so that's bullish for me as well. Like there is not much leverage in the system, which means that when we come down, we're not triggering all these shorts and having these aggressive liquidations and falling very far. I feel like, as I said, we've kind of had that uh, event happen. And, uh, and so I'm not worried about like flash crashes at all right now. I think there's not much leverage in the system. It's a fairly healthy market. Okay, and what else do we have? That's it, really. Um, I've been looking at Matic a lot this week. Um, I've been adding to my Matic position fairly aggressively. Um, you know, if we look on the weekly chart, you can see we broke out of this giant pennant formation. We're looking at closing above it just. We have a bit of a doji, you know, quite a volatile week. So <laughs> what's that for a candle this week? Yeah, Matic has had a 50% volatility week. So, you know, it doesn't know where it's at right now. Um, but it did put in, oh, almost, it broke last week's high. Um, I still, I feel like this, you know, this lower trend line has been very supportive. I think Matic um, is looking really quite strong. If the market overall turns bullish, then Matic could easily pop uh, for me. And Matic's dominance at 0.7% of the total market up for the week. All right, that's it, Crypto Cats. I hope you found it useful. Please do like, subscribe, share with the mates. I'm just a guy on the internet. This is not financial advice. I hope you found it valuable and I will speak to you ever so soon. All the best.